right? But every single ritual he does is a Catholic ritual, which I'm <laughs> fine because I was raised Catholic. <laughs> he does like communion. He does uh, confessional, all the, the whole thing. I don't go to the confessional, though. I've been really meaning to, but I don't. I don't know how to explain my guilt to God anymore. Anyways, what would you like to ask? Um, I just, um, I, I guess. Also, put your gun in your pocket. You're inside the house of the Lord. Oh, sorry, I'll set it aside. Both of them? You're going to shoot Jesus. No, I don't want to shoot Jesus. He's put, hey, it's fine. The, the pistol's fine. It's okay. I tucked it outside. No. Right. Um, I guess I thought from our conversation before, with um, how long you've you've been around. Um, I guess I'm just trying. I guess I thought maybe you would understand better than most. Um. I try. It's. I'm a detective. I, I try to understand. It's I, hard. I um, I saw the inside of the rug store today. The inside of what? The rug store. Ah, oh, you saw the inside of the old rug store. Do you know about the rug store? All of you took me there today. Eastwick himself. Yeah. Did uh, he know you were a deputy? They took me from Emerald. They talked about something about a pet, and he said he wanted one of his own. And um, mm. they took me there. I try never to lie. They asked me if I was off duty, and I said yes. They've asked me it, what, twice before? And um, I said, yes, I am off duty. Later, he ended up telling me how stupid that was because he said nobody was going to come looking for me. Yeah. But, but I didn't want to lie. I guess I was damned if I did not damned if I didn't. Yeah, there's no winning in that situation. Uh, but they um, they took me there. And we got through the front door. And, um, you know, they took my notebooks off of me. Uh, one being my joke book and the other one being, um, the one we talked about, the one I showed you. Yeah, the one that is very unfortunate that they might find. Yeah. Yeah. I had it on me today because I only keep it on me when, when they're active. I mean, with... Matt Dursk. He got hurt today. Thought it was a good time to have it on me. But, um, when he read that notebook, they, um, they put me in a cage. Apparently there's a cage in there. Yeah, there is. And he said when he finally came back downstairs, he said how smart and observant I was. But he said he doesn't need that. He needs them to be stupid like McGregor. That's what he told me. And um, we had a bit of a conversation. He was especially wanting to know about Scout. What I had been told. We went back and forth for a bit, but I, I froze up. I've always, since I was a kid, when I'm scared, I can't talk. And I was trying to keep talking. And, um, we went on for a bit, and he decided he was going to kill me. And he, um, had me stand where they had just hurt someone previously. The blood was still on the ground. And, um, there was a lot that happened. A lot of things were said. 
Not so much by me. I kept trying to think, God, just talk, just talk. What can you say that would make them want to not kill you? And I told them, I said, I, I really don't want to see Van Horn hurt because it's still a town. There's still people that live there. You know, it, it may be... It's supposed to be just as important as roads in any other town. There's people that live there that don't get the choice to live there. And he said, well, they'll just... I, I tried to convince them that, you know, killing me doesn't really serve him. Because all that research I did, everything I looked into, everything I learned said, he never does anything without a reason. And, and, and killing me, smart or not, or observant or whatever he said, wouldn't it be better to have a deputy alive that that doesn't want violence against the place, that would rather take them when they're outside of the town? And he said, well, wouldn't having one less deputy serve me? And I said, you know, more and more cadets come in every day. And I'm just going to get replaced. For every one deputy that dies, there's three more that take their place. The day, The day that... That McCain died. I, uh, I was sworn in. Not, what, even 20 minutes later? And I just kept trying to talk and talk and talk. And, um... Then he made me stand where Ducky died. Before they stuffed a rat in her mouth, I'm supposing. Yep. And... He said how we had failed her. How easy it was. And, um... You know what I think is the only thing that saved me? Was I brought up... Sissica and Peaches and what they did to Peaches in front of him. I'd, it was all I could think of in that moment. I didn't want to talk about how I'd been digging into every piece of his past. How I had spoke to people that knew him before he was this. People that loved him. I, I, I didn't want to say too much because I thought, God, if I'm going to die, I don't want to doom them too. Uh, but I kept trying to think, I, I've collected all these puzzle pieces. Uh, there's, what do I do now? And he started speaking about Hart and Peaches and Sissica. And he said what happened in Sissica with Peaches. He said he didn't hold any malice about it because it was that moment that led to the creation of Van Horn that led to them making it what it was, to making them what they are today. And I wonder, did we make a worse monster that day? But after that conversation, there was a shift. He looked curious, tilting his head a bit, amused by what I said. He said, you think you, with your little shirt and your freckles, that you think you're going to do something good? And that's when I talked about Hart. I tried to say that, that you know, Hart went through so much and still continued to try to be good. No matter how much people hurt him, these trials tried to do right. And he talked about Peaches and Hart, about their relationship. And then um, he walked away. All of them grouped up, and um, I could hear Scout say, Oh, she's like a newborn little baby deer. I don't know what they said. They were too far away. It was only him I heard. And then he, Wallaby walked back up and said, Good night, Deputy. And I don't remember much past that. Except I woke up in St. Denis and I got stitches all across my face. And I know it sounds stupid, but it doesn't change anything. But, but, 
it doesn't change what I'm going to look into. It doesn't change what I'm working on. Because I have to wonder if I had come into that without the, if they had had the notebook, if it was exactly the same, but I didn't know about Siska and Peaches and all these other little things, I'd be dead right now. That was the only thing that changed his demeanor. Maybe. But, but I sit there and I am, I'm scared because I've never sat there. It, it, the, the gunfights, these shootouts that we go into, everything's so automatic. You don't have time to think about it. It's different. I knew everybody said it was different, and I tried to listen to them, but it is different when you are held somewhere, when they're holding your life in their hands, and they're almost amused by it, and you realize nobody even knows you're gone. And all I asked him, I said, can you at least leave my body somewhere that my parents can find me? And everything was just so damn funny to him. Have you ever went through something like that? Yeah, I have. Um... Did you ever hear the story about me and Hart getting kidnapped by the uh, Dead End Gang? I haven't. Hmm. Alright. After my honeymoon, me and my, well, during my honeymoon, I guess I should say, um, me and my wife, we went to Guarma. Um, it was a magical time, probably. One of the best weeks of my life. Um, I think probably the best week of my life, to be honest. Um, but, lo and behold, when we were on Guarma, we discovered that uh, Harriet Thatcher was also on Guarma. And where Harriet Thatcher is, Scout is. And where Scout is, Wallaby is. So, me and the wife, even though we're supposed to be enjoying our honeymoon and not working, even though we're on international, you know, grounds and we're, we're looking, we're looking for the, the wallaby kids. We're looking for the signs of the dead end gang and we're finding bits and pieces, little, little tracks, right? And so after uh, one evening, I go to sleep, and my wife wakes up early. It's the day we're about to leave. Uh, she wakes up. Wallaby's right there outside of her bungalow. And he takes her. Well, uh, she's walking out. I was too deep in sleep, just sleeping it away, dreaming about better things, I guess. Has a gun pointer to her, takes her away, and he says, I see you discovered us, to, you know, Detective blah da da and he goes on a rambling spiel, and he, he tells her, if you tell anybody that we're on this island, I will gut your husband and insert his wedding ring in his stomach. So, we leave Guarma, and you can bet the first thing we fucking did was make a dossier file about it. But, people in the department are human beings. So are the dead end gang, and so are everyone else, and there's one thing human beings are good at. Making mistakes. So, Sheriff Sand informs uh, some deputies that the Dead End Gang is on Guarma. He does this before he reads the full dossier file where it says explicitly, keep this quiet. Oh, so he no. tells Nadia Dream, who is Nadia, I forgot what Nadia's original last name was, I forgot her maiden name, don't tell her I said that. Uh, but she, uh, she informs... Uh, 
the people who live on Guarma. She sends telegrams to the quote unquote princess of Guarma and the minister of defense of Guarma. Needless to say, this minister of defense has history with Wallaby and wants to kill him. So, Dead and Gang finds out real fast that we told. $5,000 was the price put on my head. Five thousand? Five thousand dollars. Enough to buy a decent wagon. So for that week I was I refused, first of all, uh, to let them get the better of me. I'm a stubborn man, you see. And I kept going out on duty and riding around, and I occasionally got in a few confrontations with folk looking to claim. Uh, Quills always like to taunt me about it. They always said, Hooper, what's to stop us from making that $5,000? But I was always riding with deputies, you see. So then they'd walk out of the office and say, us. It was, uh, not, it was, I was pretty proud of the department during that. So some time passes. And me and Hart were delivering, I believe it was a, a member of some gang. I forgot, I forgot what gang it was. To Sisica, And we decided, you know, I'm, I'm with the sheriff. You know, me and the sheriff will be fine. We're in San Denis, under the docks. Don't drop the fell off. We'll be okay. So we go to the docks. Bring the man to Sisica. We come back. As we're, you know, at the telegram station... Uh, sending in our telegram that we're back on the mainland. We hear the thunder of who's. I guess Van Horn had somebody who had uh, been watching the boats leaving the docks in San Denis. Because $5,000 is a hell of a lot of money. So... Me and Hart, we hide in the telegram station, and they look around. We see that it's every member of Dead and Gang riding around. And we decide, okay, we're going to wait for them to you know, go around. They go towards the front near the telegrams to go send some telegrams, and me and Hart decide to make a book, you know, book it. So we start running towards the office. Uh, you know where the violin story is? I do. I like to sit outside it sometimes and listen. Me too. I know you still enjoy that place. And then the, uh, the clockmakers, uh, when it strikes the hour, all the, uh, the clocks go off. But um, we get past the violin place and a rider comes at us. Richard Eastwick himself. He's got his gun at heart. He's got a gun at me, and he says, It's a lucky day. Looks like we got Tom and a sheriff. And so they take us. Um, but you see, I've been waiting for this. Because if I'm going to be taken, I'm going to be smart about it. And by be smart, I'm going to try to take one down with me, you see. So what they don't know is I've had a gift box in my pocket with a knife inside for the better part of the few, the few weeks I was, you know, highly wanted, as it were. So they That's take us so to Van Horn. Smart. No, thank you. I learned it from the criminals smuggling things into Sissica. I'll have to keep that one in mind. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me see. Do I still have that knife? Nope. I think I put it away somewhere. Anyways. I, uh, 
get searched and scout and little Jimothy Edwin Braithwaite when he was still alive. They search through me and Hart's belongings. They take Hart's weapons. They take my weapons. But they don't take the gift box. So they had us walk towards the uh, the pier, towards the open water. And uh, won't be, he's smart, you see. He realizes, okay, we got our hands up. We're walking towards the coast. But then he says, no, let's make sure they're cuffed. So they come closer. Scout's approaching me with my own cuffs. And that's when I know I'm fucked. So I wasn't able to get Eastwick. I tried. I stabbed Scout. Stabbed him decent, apparently. He was torn up for a bit. And then I got into a scuffle with Eastwick, and I tried to slice him. I sliced him slightly, a little bit here and there. Nothing too deep, I don't think. And But he ended up smacking me with his pistol. Enough to just, you know, knock me to the ground, really. Let them bells ring, as it were. And as I'm coming to, I, I open my eyes, and in front of them is the barrel of his navy and I was looking at it and it was looking at me for a while hearts getting practically choked by Edwin Braithwaite he's begging and he's saying please Wallaby please don't hurt him he's a good man and you know who knows if I'm a good man or not at the end of the day. I guess that's for God to decide. But I've just tried to stab to death Wallaby's friend and also stab him to death. And Wallaby says, I promised this man I would cut him open and put a wedding ring in his intestines. He stabbed my friend. I should shoot him right now and get this shit over with. Heart's pleading. He's begging. I've never seen man as proud as Heart. Stoop so low. And there's all for, for a deputy like me. So... Eastwick, I don't know, he, his, his, it's like his whole face changed. He was looking at me and I, I saw death in his eyes and I was pissed. I was this spitting venom. If I was going out, I was going out, you know, on my terms. I called him a bish bash bitch. I called him a bunch of names and a bunch of things I was... I told him to kill me. Hell, I was expecting my life to end right there. He killed my friends. He'd convinced my best friend to betray the entire, entire department. Bill was your friend? Best friend. Me and Bill... Would wake up every day and we would sit on the roof of Armadilla. The chairs are still there and we'd drink. And not a little bit. I mean, I still drink every day, but not as much as I did back then. Yeah. It was a different time. Out west, the Kettleman gang was at the peak of its power. The Quill gang didn't even exist yet. It was just a nuisance. You weren't allowed to go out west, allegedly, without a posse of four. 
but there were a few New Austin deputies, you know, you're not going to tell a deputy who's stationed in New Austin he can't go to New Austin. So we'd sit up there without support, getting robbed over and over again, trying our dangest to make an arrest here or there. Occasionally we would. Occasionally we'd have to produce charges a weird amount sometimes to get arrests, but we got arrests. It was all against the world, huh? Yeah. We were the Dillo Boys. Me, uh, Pop Sullivan, Negan McAllister, Big Balls, Bill Williamson. Do you miss the memory of them? I did. I did for a long time. I missed, I missed my friend Bill. But when I, whenever I think about him, I can't help but remember the monster he became and the things he took from me. I, I tried to do so much reading. Mm. Trying to put everything together, but it's different. It's different than experiencing it. The coyote, Bill, Valentine, what they tried to do to Dalloway. So you know they, they, they didn't want to take Pop Sullivan. They meant to take Dalloway. They meant to kill my wife. Dalloway's your wife? Yeah. I didn't know that. Well, now you do. Comes full circle. Bill, Bill would have taken your wife from you. He would have. Killed my wife. Killed one of the first deputy I trained, which is Coyote. And he would have killed a man that I would consider his closest family to me. I uh, look. I saw Valentine as as more than a brother. Uh, I saw him as the next generation, if that makes sense. I saw him as. My my successor. Like, like a protege. Maybe. Uh, it's maybe closer than that. I don't want to get into it. It makes me sad. Um. Anyways. The day that Bill betrayed the department, I lost... I lost everything. I... The only thing I had left was Delaway, thank God. Hell, I would have even had Delaway if it wasn't for, uh, for Valentine. Did he introduce y'all? No, he, uh, he was my accomplice in trying to, to ask her out on dates, and then we, we fumbled really hard. <laughs> we made a, a fake crime scene, and... As she actually thought it was a real one, she got really upset, and he took the fall for it. He took the blame. He was your wingman. He was. He was. He was a lot of things. Anyways, what was the main topic here? Oh yeah. So as I'm laying there, staring down his gun, begging for death, making fun of his old catchphrase. He, I don't know, I don't think he, there were tears, but it looked like he, he looked like a sad man for a split second, like a drop of humanity filled his just dry, humorless corpse. And for a split second, he looked like a, a human being. And he told the sheriff to take me and leave. 
He really did that? I'm still wondering why. I don't know why. I... I think I'm... I might have an idea of why. Oh, shoot. What's your idea? Everything I've been looking into. Everything I've been thinking about. There's a clear line between dead-end kids and dead-end gang, right? And dead-end gang is more all about a van horn now. I... I've had this theory that he's been very sentimental about the past. That even what he's doing now is just what he was doing before in Rhodes. That attachment. That need to protect a place. But the difference between Rhodes and Van Horn is it's become twisted. I think... I think they're still... I don't know if he's truly a monster or a broken wallaby of the past wearing a monster's skin. And I think anything that reminds him of the past, I thought it would make him angry. I was too afraid to bring up anything about his past to choose the right words to say. But when I brought up Sisica and Peaches, it changed things. Bish, bash, bosh. Change things. These are all old wallaby things. And... And everybody treats him like he's some... Monster for the sake of being a monster. But the clear thing between reports and, and everything else besides banks and anything else in between... Anything dealing... Some kind of aggression with Van Horn... It's an obsession of his. He was asking me even about what moves we were making against Van Horn. It's that protectiveness to not lose what you lost in the past. I've thought about it a lot lately. If you lost everything, Hooper, you lost everything. And you finally found one last thing. Actually, when you lost everything, and you only had your wife. Wouldn't you more than ever be willing to do the ultimate acts to protect her? I think about him a lot with that. I think, I think if used correctly, the past is his weakness, his only weakness. I'm just starting to realize that today. And you saying what you did just made me think of it. I think the past is a lot of people's weakness. But I do think that you're walking a very dangerous line. Because I agree that he's not some sort of beastly monster. He's something more terrifying than that. He's a human monster, you see. You may be able to see the human in him every once in a while, but his point of redemption is long lost. I used to have this belief, especially after after Valentine and Jesse and Bill and all this, that death was too kind. that if we captured some of these people and you know they should serve as a reminder to the other criminals of 
mistakes of the past. They should spend their lives in Sisica. But the more I run into Richard Eastwick, the more I run into all these people, the more I run into Zip Quill. I realize that they're human just as much as I am, just as much as you are. But they're stuck. Like glue. Sometimes I feel like I'm stuck like glue. Into these notions of principle of what Van Horn is. You have to remember that we're creatures of habit, right? Right. When we do something, whether we like it or not, chances are we'll do it again. Wallaby had his gang, his dead end kids, and they had a bunch of shoe bandits, and they would rob people and make them dance. And he still does that. The man has changed entirely, but he likes his games. And always has, always will. Yeah, he read my choke book out loud. Mm-hmm. His laugh is terrifying. I've never heard him laugh before. Yeah. I think what scares me the most about him is, you know, me and Zoe had a conversation once. We were both frustrated that no matter how much she and I try to help people in our own way, in our soft way, sometimes maybe too soft, that when things don't go right, these people blame us as if we did these terrible things to them, as if we're responsible for their actions. And I told Zoe, I said, I think it's because people like you are like a mirror. You make people see their true self. You show them what's good in them and what's bad in them. But what do you do with a mirror when you don't like what you see? You break it. You don't want to see it anymore. It hurts too bad. And I think for Wallaby, for us, especially as Law, I think he shows us exactly what we could become, what anybody could become if, if pushed to it. I'm not saying he's innocent. I'm not saying he's not accountable for his own actions. But the world is unkind and it, it warps us. I don't, I don't think for a second think I can change his heart or mind. I'm not that naive. But, but all of this, everything I've been working towards was never about even arresting them, it was about protecting people. But protecting the department, the crossing. I thought if we're playing chess with them, if you can get into somebody's mindset and predict their next move, well, you have the advantage, right? Hell, even if, say, five people were going to die, and you learn something a little bit more, and, and four people die. Saving that one extra person made it all worth it, right? Yeah, I'd say it would. It's bad though. These people were were so worried today. And I love Hank. 
But Hank was so angry at me. Yelled at me, said that he told me I shouldn't be on my own. That I knew that they go around Emerald and I was still there alone. The thing was, is that I was, I was there. I can't just not go to an area because it's dangerous. It, it's a central location. I normally go there and leave very, very quickly. The only difference was I got to talking to somebody. We were talking about sheriffs. And and then and then they were there. But I, I've always said before, if bad's gonna come to you, you can't hide from it. Especially with people like them. They'll always find you. I'd just rather not look over my shoulder for the rest of my life. But weirdly... Who do you sound like? Who do I sound like? You sound like Coyote. That's so. Well, of course, not like literally, but... The way you're talking about the situation... God, he was so eager to investigate Van Horn. It all started because he was trying to help those hobos, those train hopping hobos. He tried to reason with with Wallaby. They say that Bill killed him. They went out to uh, they went out to meet Bill in New Austin because Bill said he was in trouble and he needed help. They already knew that Bill was betraying the department. They they knew and they knew about it. They were told by sheriffs, "Don't don't meet with Bill alone." They went out there, but not because they were curious, not because of investigation, not because they wanted to be the ones to make the capture. They went there because Bill was a friend in need. Even after all the shit he probably had done, they, they knew all about it. And they saw the redemption. They saw a chance to to help their friend and just be that be that goodness they went out there to save that one extra life and they ended up losing everything in the process I don't know if you read about Pop Sullivan a lot he was a, a fine deputy he got away from that situation uh, he ended up uh hitting one of them in a tunnel and getting off the horse and getting away. Uh, he put in an account, put in a statement about what happened, and he's never been seen since. We know he's fine because he rode out of town, but... It shook him. Guess after something like that, it would be hard not to run away. I, I talked to Sheriff Rabbit a lot. They talked about how, um, well, how close they were with, with Valentine and, and Coyote. How they tried to save them. Yeah, rode out after him. I was trying to follow them for the longest time. All the while I was whinging in armadillo looking at the telegrams every five seconds. Well, how many friends have you lost? How many? Yeah. 
I know that's a hard question. I just, with everything you've said, I just got to thinking. Everyone that's been brought up, the ones you said that you cared about. I think going through all the names of the friends I've lost is a difficult thing. Uh, the number is a lot more manageable if we just go by the friends that I've lost to Dead End Gang. Frank Martin. The Deputy Frank. I knew him for 20 minutes. We became friends. You ever meet someone you become friends with in 20 minutes? You just click right away. You, their humor matches yours, and you just sit there, and you can't help but make each other laugh. One of those people you meet, and you go, you're going to be in my life forever, and you're going to be somebody really special. I don't know about that. that. That seems a bit excessive. I get those feelings. Hank made me feel that way. Hmm. Okay. Anyways, he was he was a funny guy, Frank. Uh, we were in Blackwater. The bell went off bank robbery, and we uh, we went out there, we slid to it, and the negotiator was Little Jimothy, dead end gang. I stayed behind, got the hostage, got their statement, cleared up the bank. Frank and five other deputies went after him. Five deputies came back, and Frank's corpse was found an hour later in the plane, trampled to death. Not shot. It's hard to tell if he was beaten down or what, but he was trampled to death. That was the first one, I think. The second one would be Coyote. shot by my best friend Bill who had joined Dead End Gang. Apparently the last things he might have said were why? After that there's a man that was closer to me than anyone was Jesse Valentine, a.k.a. Dark Jesse. Every time we were injured, we would get in our pajamas and go gambling. When I heard he was injured, I rode up to Valentine, the town, this town, to go meet up with him because I heard he was injured, and I figured, well, I'll cheer him up and we'll go gambling. Instead, I found his corpse. I didn't know what to say for three minutes, and by then I was just rambling at him, telling him his uniform was disorderly, and I tried to cover up his gunshot wounds by closing his coat. After that, Trey Starr, one of the finest and most handsome deputies I ever met, I, I trained Star, I rode with Star, we were good friends with Star, and he helped me bury Coyote and Jesse, and he was, he was a stable rock to help us get us through those times. Together, we both swore retribution. We swore to get vengeance. By hell or high water, we would find Bill, and we'd arrest him and make him pay for what he'd done. 
for what he took from us. After that would be Bill. If you look at his citizen registry file, it still says he's alive. But I know, I know he's dead. Not from a credible source, but from a look. I asked, where's Bill? Once when I was kidnapped by them and Wallaby looked at me and said, I killed him. He wasn't useful anymore. The man betrayed everything he knew, everything he loved, everything he was. And the man he did it for killed him. I guess in a way, if there's someone out there willing to do all of that for the people they love the most, betray them, how could you trust them to keep them around? Guess so. After that would be my good friend Hudson Hart. He never really felt like a sheriff to me, to be honest. I, uh, I'd always just sit there, and I think I still do it to a lot of people. I I see them, and it doesn't matter what rank they are. I I try to poke fun, or I try to to liven up the situation. And and Hart always was there with me, and we'd sit there, and we'd <laughs> we'd talk, and we'd joke around. We'd go on go on patrols. He always was busy, Hart, but when he had time, he would patrol with you know a few people and. I was lucky the several times I was able to patrol with him, just him and me. He got bit by a snake. I told him was there once. <laughs> we had to rush him to Blackwater and <laughs> pray to God that his foot wouldn't get too bad and he wouldn't, you know, have to amputate or nothing. Whinging the whole way, he told me to suck out the venom, and I said, that's not how that works. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But yeah, it's all the things that Dead End Gang's taken from me. I, um, did I ever tell you how guilty I felt over Hart's death? No, I don't think you have. A lot of everything I've I've worked on it stems a lot from Hart. I didn't know him long compared to everyone else, but he had such an impact. The way he acted, the way the way he was so protective, so good hearted. And, and I I think I think it was within what my first week of being a deputy. And I um. I remember. There was a killer out there, and um, there was a cipher I, I had solved, and it was such a simple one, but God, I, I was so proud, I was so eager. I just, I wanted to show Hart, look, I can do it. Look, I, I cracked the case. It, and it was so small, but, but it said, find me an emerald. Find me at emerald. And I, I came up to Hart and I said, Look, I've solved it, you know, blah, blah, blah. And he said, well, all right, we're going to Emerald. It was me, him, Tori, and Miss Marigold. And we all went to Emerald. And I remember, you know, I, I, ironically enough, I, I asked him about Dead End Gang, about Wallaby, because I had watched, uh, I had watched them drag uh, Barnaby, Barnaby Case. And... I don't even remember what made me ask. And, well, we're at Emerald, and we see six riders come in. 
And we're off our horses. Our horses are by that, that saloon there, that little building there. And we're by the windmill. And I'm sitting there, I'm sitting there. And Hart, he's instantly nervous. They came from east. Looking back now, I, I know what he must have been afraid of. And he's telling us all to get on our horses. He's like, get out of here, get out of here. He's the last one on his horse. He's making sure we're all, all on our horses and that we're going. And there comes Wallaby. Scout, Wesley. I don't know who was all there. There's, there's six coming after us. And Hart tries to stay behind. To distract Wallaby. To talk to him. I don't know what he wanted. And I remember calling out to him, Hart. I don't know what I was going to say. I just, I was just begging in my mind to please don't stay behind with them. All of you completely ignored Hart and he kept coming for us. And um, my horse, Mister, he got shot out from underneath me. And before I could even get back on my feet, all of you had his gun on me. Every one of them had their gun on me. So scared. I don't even think at this point I had been in a gunfight. And um, I got my hands up, and 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 Tori had escaped, but Miss Marigold, she told me later on, she said I couldn't just leave you there. She stayed behind. And Hart, cut back up. He gets off of his horse, and he's instantly in between me and Wallaby. And he's just he's begging. He's begging Wallaby, like, you don't want her, you want me. And Wallaby said, who said I wanted you? And, well, Wallaby starts playing any, mini miny, mo between me and Miss Marigold on which one he's going to shoot. And, uh, Hart told him, you know, there's going to be six deputies coming. And Wallaby's frustrated, it's... It's bothering him, but uh, he ends up telling Hart, meet me in Strawberry. And then, and then you know what happened. Everything that led up to that moment, that day. I keep always thinking, what if I had never brought them to Emerald? What if I hadn't been so eager? What if I hadn't been so slow? What if I had been quicker? What if I had moved a little bit differently? And Mr. didn't get shot out from underneath me. I think, what if Hart was still here? I thought everything of him. But the more I dig into things, people were so upset with him. Yeah. I hate those moments. You'll get a few of them uh, throughout your career. But there's nothing you can do about the past. And who knows, maybe if you did go back and you could change that one little detail, chances are maybe it wouldn't change anything. But you'll never know. And that's the worst part about it, is you'll never know if that one little thing that, that you did or couldn't do just would have been enough. Yeah. I, um, I transferred to Lemoyne. Sheriff Sam Winters. Of Armadillo, he um, he said he needed to transfer me. That he that he had to um, to move somebody because New Austin was too full. And I thought about throwing away my badge that day and saying, "Fuck it, I'm not leaving." face the repercussions, see what it may, 
be volatile, be a real piece of shit. It was a real piece of shit back then. But I said, you know what? I'm going to bite the bullet and I'm going to go to Lemoyne. And I left Bill in Armadillo by himself. It's not a day I don't think about that and wonder if that's that's why Bill got corrupted the way he did. Maybe if I was there, I could have changed something. Maybe if I was there, you know, we could have faced dead and gang together. How do you think Wallaby got into his head? I don't know. Money? Women? Booze? Maybe Dead End Gang saw Bill do something he shouldn't have done. Bill and myself, uh, to a lesser extent, but Bill especially. Bill, he, he didn't join the department to help people. Hell, I didn't join the department to help people either. Hey, something I, I learned, I learned to do, and I, it's what I value most about the job nowadays. But Bill was originally part of the Texas Rangers. You ever heard of him? All I know about them is what Hank told me. I know both the Hammer Brothers used to be one. Yeah, Bill was was one maybe before they were, but EM, he was not with a good, good group. But if someone broke the law, even to some slight degree, uh, they would rope somebody around the neck and drag them until they were dead. Oh. Neck snappers. Bill was an angry man. Hell, I was an angry man. Still am. I try not to be. Um, but if Dead and Gang saw Bill do something he shouldn't have and put his badge on the line, I could see Bill feeding them a bone from time to time and of course as soon as you start feeding the pigeons that you you can't you can't stop doing that because now you've already fed the pigeons and if someone finds out you fed the pigeons they're going to call you a pigeon feeder and so that's just more ammunition he, he crossed that threshold that line I told Sheriff Rabbit, sometimes when you reach for the darkness, the darkness reaches back. And I guess sometimes that darkness leaves a mark. One word would know. One word would know. Sheriff Rabbit flinched when I said that. My sheriff is not a good person. But I respect them wholly. And I don't agree with everything they've done. I don't think I'm a good person. But we both try our hardest. This job is, is really fucking tough. Not because you might die, but because you might survive. I'm sorry what happened to you today. You're going to look around for reason for this. You're going to think about a lot of things. You're going to probably be fascinated about it. You think the, you think your facial scar? Well, if I know, I haven't looked at it yet. They they bandaged it all up, and I just 
put a covering over it to keep the bandages clean. It's a good idea. But if it does, that'll be a reminder. It'll bug you constantly. If you want to keep going after Van Horn, they know you now. There's no, you know, trying to be undercover. If especially if you got a scar from what they did. There's a reason I teach undercover and I don't do it. I didn't even think about that. Hank and his missing earlobe. If this thing scars, I guess. No matter how bad it feels, that fear, the everything trying to come to terms with what happened, we're feeling so vulnerable. There's also a sense of comfort that I faced the thing that I dreaded the most and I came out of it alive. And, and there's almost that sense of, besides me looking into his past, the history of everything. What other reason would he have to hunt me down and kill me now? Unless he just changes his mind. He could. He could wake up tomorrow and decide, hey, I want to kill CJ Dollars. Yeah, but he could also wake up tomorrow and say, hey, I want to kill Tom. <laughs> you never know with him. Anything that goes through his deluded head, I think his paranoia is, is a good weakness besides his past. The man's off his rocker. That's a good point. Because cause once he read that part about Scout, he was really insistent about knowing everything. I I was honest as I could be. I tried to word things differently so maybe they wouldn't be so bad. He said, who, who said I was unwell? Thing is, is that I heard it from Bolton. I heard it from the department. That shouldn't be any different. What I didn't say, though, was the whole reason it even got brought up is because a civilian talked about him collapsing, I think. Something like that. But he's so... You're right, he is paranoid. I'll have to look more into it. And just... Thank you for talking. I just... I thought more... You, well, you more than anyone would probably understand. No, I get it. I think... I think I know a good way to describe... Richard Eastwick. Ever since he's, you know, he killed the company. You know about the company? I've heard bits and pieces. There's a group of people. They lived in Van Horn who did a lot of business. Some genuine, some not so genuine. And he slaughtered them. They worked for him. And he slaughtered them in the rug store. One by one, you found bodies of these people. Some knew it was coming and showed signs of fight. Some had no idea. There's a man named Gannon we dug up a while back. And when we arrested him, you know, Wallaby that is, uh, he hadn't, uh, confessed to any of these killings, but he was already insisting at the time. So eventually we got the gist. He pretty much admitted to all of it, but there's nothing we could have pressed at that time. Not enough circumstantial evidence. Richard Eastwick is a puppeteer with too many puppets and not enough hands. He talked about that when he does die, 
about how he has these people that will take his place. Thing is, is though, I don't believe that they care about this place like he does. I think they care, but I don't think they care to be what he is or have every attempted best interest for Van Horn. But you're right, a lot of puppets, but not enough hands. I don't know if he can trust any other hands that would try to come in. Nope. You know, I said this to Wild, but I feel like it applies to you. Sometimes I wish I could just bundle up y'all's experience and just absorb it. And, and, and. That would be a nightmare. That's what Wild said. She said, I wouldn't want that for you. She was like, you keep being, you know, happy CJ. And don't. Don't feel the hurt. But I, I keep trying to learn from the past because I don't want to make the same mistakes. Sometimes when I wake up after I've been injured, I don't feel relief. I used to. You know, being a newer deputy and you know, getting a gunfight, get injured, I'd wake up medical office the next day and I'd feel my wounds and go, huh, I did it. I survived. I miss my friend, CJ. I miss. Oh, no. I miss everything. Valentine was supposed to be the future. You know what I mean? He was supposed to he was supposed to take over and then I could sit back in a chair and watch him lead things as I gambled my you know money away and But the people around us we we hope to God that we'll see him tomorrow. But when I'm done, and I put my badge down, I don't know if there's anything left for me. My wife sort of feels the same. Horrible things happen to us all the time, but we keep picking up this badge. It's like a sick addiction. Because we want to be there to make a difference. I want to be there when I'm no longer needed on Armadillo. When the streets are paved. And I know I probably won't. That's why my grave's in San Denis. Bought it for $2,000. Because I figure when I die, I'll be retired and I can finally enjoy those paved streets. I try to warn every cadet that if you take this job, either you're going to die or you're going to see all the friends you know die around you. And they all take it as some old man just complaining, telling them about all the, the things or trying to scare them away. But God, I'm so fucking genuine. I uh, <laughs> try so hard to, to put through that point that hey this is this is not a good life I um I think about I've been a deputy since November and we have lost Star and Hart McCain Abner Garrett Benny Cleo Augustine Augustine And then I think about how two of those deaths are because of my parents. Malarkey. Yeah, malarkey. And each one hurts. And I told Hank once, I said, I, I hate that I... I hate being so upset. I hate crying so hard every time. 
But I think I'm more afraid of when you stop crying. When it stops hurting as bad. When you become numb to it. I think I'm lucky. Well, I didn't cry for malarkey, but... It does become easier to accept these deaths, uh, especially uh, ones you don't know in the department so well. Like, one of the greatest gifts malarkey ever gave me is not getting to know me. Because I can say he was a good deputy, and I can put him in the ground. Cleo, on the other hand, Benny, on the other hand, one of the last things I did before leaving to Mexico was train Benny. He wanted to become a senior deputy, and I taught him everything I know. I gave him feedback. I told him what to do, and he got it. I was so proud when I heard. Next day, I heard he was dead. Anyways, I think it's been a good talk. Yeah. Hey, thank you for everything. Sorry for talking your ear off. I yeah. just had a lot of thoughts. Be, be safe, CJ. I'm, I'm going to be as safe as I can be. And about, I guess that's about the best I can promise, right? I guess so. One of these days we're gonna kill the wallaby kid. I just wanna I just hope you don't feel bad when you we do. I think when he's gone, there's gonna be a lot more bloodshed before things get better. What do they call it? A power vacuum? Yeah. But progress is paved in cobblestone and blood.